At the Home Depot, we make it easy to turn your to-do list into a done list with our speedy delivery options. Need something in a hurry? We offer next day and even same day delivery on a wide variety of products. The best part is you can order straight from your couch. Our team is ready to help and get your order to you same day if it's placed by 4 p.m. on select products. When shopping online, filter by delivery to see availability options. Delivery at the speed you need, only at the Home Depot. Falcons Audible back, presented by AT&T. The crew is here, DJ Shockley, Dave Archer, I'm Derek Rackley, 31-26. Falcons victory over the Bucks on the road. One thing I do know, this team got a squeaky clean record on the road. Talk to me. Generally, back when we were playing guys, they always said win all of your home games and yeah. then split your away games. Falcons right. are just going to say, nah, we're just going to win all the away games. <laughs> oh, and we, you can put a little polish on NFC <laughs> South too, yeah, can't you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we stand right now, the Falcons sit atop, and I'm saying firmly atop the NFC South at 4-0. and um, What a victory. Guys came out and um, – they played really sharp from the start. Offense, Kirk Cousins had another just banner game. It's starting to turn into Kirk Cousins likes playing against the Buccaneers, yeah, fellas. No, there's a bunch of guys that like playing against right, the Bucs. Exactly. Um, the schedule there was so many things that you could say coming into this game needed to happen. Um, I just had this feeling in the back of my head, guys, that even though they were without Godwin and Evans, Mayfield was going to make this competitive. The guy is just too much of a competitor to just roll over on his back and just let Atlanta come in there and beat him. Yeah. And they found ways to continue to move the football and score points, but turnover margin, which has been kind of a bugaboo mm. for Atlanta all season, they finally were able to win that solidly in this game. Arch, what was kind of your initial 30,000-foot view thoughts of the game? Well, whenever you, you go on the road, you're looking for somebody to make a play early, maybe change the tie, take some of the energy out of the building, yeah. whatever's going on. And it didn't take long. Jesse Bates, I, the dude has a knack for getting the ball out. The, the only guy I guys can think of, you guys, the, Peanut Tillman yeah. was yeah. a guy that could do that in Chicago. Yeah. But this dude has a knack for not only getting the ball out, but getting the ball. Yeah. You know, he recovered himself he has the pick later on um the guy has had in, in two games again you talk about guys that don't want the Tampa don't want to see anymore he's got 16 tackles uh an interception and three force fumbles against the <laughs> kids he's got so they don't want to see him he's he's a long list of guys Tampa's not interested in seeing again but I thought that was the key to me was to get something early get a short field opportunity uh and then how about Raheem right there in that first drive you you kind of bobble along to fourth and three. He says, "Hey, this was our opportunity. We got a, a break from Jesse. We're going for it." Yeah. And yep. Kyle shows his physicality, gets clean on the corner, and runs a touchdown. You look up, and you've been in the game for two and a half minutes, and it's seven nothing. You're know. on the road. Yeah. I thought that was huge in the game. Not only that, Arch, but the but Tampa starting, and they were they were a couple running plays. They yeah. were just kind of darting through the Eight, defense. Yards, and fortunately, yeah. as you mentioned, Jesse with the punch out, and it's almost like he's just got laser guys. It's like his <laughs> fist came in there, and like it's easy when they slow it down on replay, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I mean, his fist just goes right to the full." It's going full speed, yeah. folks, yeah. right? But he just knows how to get his hands more than one way yeah. all over the football. DJ, what did you think of the game? Kind of overarching thoughts. The number one thing I think is what you mentioned off the top was my man Kirk Cousins and the way he played. I thought there were some plays in this ball game, and it goes back to day one when everybody said, okay, who can we get? Who is Roth thinking about? And the number one thing he talked about was having a guy – that was an elite processor. And yep. there was yep. a couple plays in this ball oh my game goodness, yeah. that Tell point, me about it, Chuck. points exactly <laughs> to that. Even the touchdown that Arch talks about on that fourth down to Kyle Pitts, they run the, usual, the other way. Yes, they run their usual try to get Drake on an option route, and his safety on the top side, you're talking about running to Drake, runs to it, Kirk pumps, he comes off of it and finds, finds Kyle on the other side. How about Bijan's touchdown? He got to his fifth read on that. Yes. You're talking about star, boom, 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 and getting back to the backside. I mean, just an unbelievable job. Yeah, I mean, who are we patting on the back? Those five guys up front, oh, yeah. right? Those I mean, five guys up front. I mean, giving them time. Obviously, yeah. to get through the progressions, you got to have some some wear for for the O-line to, to, to hold up. The, the other one, how about Mooney's touchdown? Unbelievable job. You got three by one on the backside. They're running the patented. Kyle's running through the middle. Here comes Drake on a on an end cut. We've hit this probably a bunch of times throughout the season. Antoine Winfield trying to be the, you know, the heady guy he is, kind of mm -hmm. pushing towards that three-receiver side. And as QBs, we always call it just a little peekaboo route. We just yeah. take a peek at it just to make sure that safety's doing what he's supposed to. 
and Winfield getting a little too greedy over there looking at three receiver side, and you already got outside leverage by the corner. I mean, he, he drops a perfect ball to Mooney for the touchdown. I mean, those are three plays. I mean, there's probably ten more plays yeah. like that where he goes through the processing part of it. But just an unbelievable job of knowing where to go with the football, how to dictate, and if a defense tries to take away your first and second read, how to get back to those other guys. I thought Kirk was seeing the field as good as he probably could, and Ross said after the game, hey, this is probably the best game he's played. And yeah. I know he had a 509-yard game, but this was a game where you know it. This guy was efficient. He got the ball out. He didn't hold on to it. He got rid of it. Guys made plays. He was efficient throwing it. Just an unbelievable right. job by Kirk. I, I got to get shocked to tell me about the French silk pie they handed you. You know, that, that feeling you get when that, when that apple cobbler comes with that <laughs> ice cream on top of it. They got mm. Mooney running a bench route right at the end of the first half. Shut your, shut your and face up. <laughs> this is oh – I, I, I mean, I got chills going down my back yeah. thinking about the throw. It, they play cover two man, and they jump inside. They got the core. They got safety rolling over the top. And Kirk makes the – he drops, sets Where's his feet, and it's just Come silky on. smooth. Ball Come comes on. out. Mooney comes out of the break, ball it's right there. Here. Toe tap, out of bounds. Tell me about it, Sean. <laughs> I'm too excited. I mean, I mean you, just, you just talked about I'm excited thinking about it. But the, the other part is the anticipation part. Oh, my goodness. You talk about Mooney said as soon as he turned around, the ball's in his arms. I mean, they played it probably as good as you can play it. There was mm-hmm. only one place you can put this football, and he let this football go before Mooney even put his right foot in the ground to plant to go to the corner out. And that ball drops perfectly in there. I mean, if I'm a DB, I am – Mad. You know, I can't even be mad. You got to, you got right? to, you got to tip your cap. You got to tip your cap. Like Absolutely. sometimes you got to do that in the NFL. So to, yeah. to to Arch's point, that was an unbelievable throw. And as QBs, you can see us. We're like giddy talking about it because <laughs> oh, you I know get... how tough of a throw that is. I couldn't talk enough about it. It was it was a, it was like a 13 yard completion. I go, oh my god, that's one of the best <laughs> throws I've ever yeah. seen. It was unbelievable. It was, but it guys, was fun. We come back to this, and and I made this point, and I think sometimes people can gloss over it. Okay, and and I when I make this point, I don't say this in any disrespect to the previous quarter. Backs. But say what you want about contract, the money they paid to Kirk Cousins, but we've seen already, th- okay, through eight games this year, he has made multiple, not a few, multiple throws that we didn't see in the last few years. Oh, no Absolutely. No right? And to me, in the National Football League, that is worth every penny you pay the guy. It's worth every penny you pay the guy because that's what you have to do to win at this level. You have to have a quarterback that can just make a couple throws that generally end up being fourth down and punt. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's the beautifully thrown anticipation right on the money, first down catches. Go ahead, DJ. One last thing. Archer's talking to Raw after the game. He's talking about all the things Kurt's done. And he said, this is why you brought him here. Raw says, no, we brought him here for the zone read. I bought the run. <laughs> I bought the 13 run. Thirteen yard I run. The run. What? The QB sneak. Uh, Shut all the noise down. My man Kurt comes running now. Kurt <laughs> wheels as he's called now. How many of you guys, when you saw him tuck it down, were like, "Oh gosh, oh, no!" Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's classic. The no, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. No, it was, it was a good play by Kurt. All Kirk. right, so Kurt Cousins, seventy nine percent completion rate in the game, twenty three of twenty nine, two hundred and seventy six yards, four touchdowns, and guys, I don't know why I always say this, but maybe even more impressively. No interceptions, mm, right? Yeah, and that's too. been the only kind of inter, the only kind of thing blemish you could say about Kirk this year has been some some mistakes, the turnovers here and there. But that's what you have to do when you play on the road is you got to go down there, and you got to play well, but you can't turn the ball over and yeah. give Baker Mayfield another opportunity, give him a short field. And we had some short fields, and we took advantage of it. And I sure think did. that's uh, a credit to Atlanta. How about um, Bijan? You guys talked a little bit about his his touchdown pass and, and Arch. You know, it's not it, sometimes when we, we go back and we look at the numbers. It's not necessarily dominating performances. But, again, it's like certain runs, I feel like there might be one guy in the NFL that can do what he does when he gets the football in his hands. Yeah, the guy is he's dynamic. I think that if you're a defender, you get a little tight when you know he's coming <laughs> because of what you've seen on tape. You've got it. He's a guy that you have to leverage tackle, meaning you've got to have outside, inside, and over the top on the guy. But And even at that <laughs> – if a guy kind of commits himself, he's going to make you miss and jump stop. I mean, think about this, guys. You had he had two plays taken away. He had a, an, I think a 15 or 17 yard run down the left sideline gets called back because of Mooney's holding, mm-hmm. yep. and then Ray Ray comes down and holds right before yeah. right before his touchdown catch. Yep. He runs 30 yards for a touchdown there. So you look up and he didn't have 65 yard rushing. All of a sudden you look at him, he's got 110 yard rushing. Mm-hmm. You sprinkle in what he did from a receiving standpoint. The guy's a dynamic football. player. 
player. And now what's happening in other meeting rooms around the league, you guys know as well as I do, you start looking at guys that are difference-making players, you think, wait a minute, we've got to make sure we concert. we got to dedicate resources to make sure we have right. this guy corralled. Right which begins to now free up the Moonies on the post routes because I've got to stay low because if Bijan gets out of the backfield, I don't want him one-on-one -on, -one on my linebacker. That's what starts to happen now, and this guy's gaining respect across the league. Well, just think about what you said, Arch, too, you, you ha how you have to leverage him. And you basically said that the best way to get him down is to have three guys. How often defensively can you actually get three guys to a ball carrier? Right. I mean, it generally never happens, yeah, right? Sure. And how many times have opposing defenses likely turned on the tape on Mondays and a defensive back just he comes downhill, he's like, I got him dead in the water. And he makes a miss. Yeah, and he he just makes them look foolish sometimes. No, Kirk, I, Kirk referenced that right there, Rack. He said I had a dead play, and you guys probably remember the play. He was late in the read, and he just threw it to the left flat and made the guy miss. I and KJ Britt, the linebacker, had standing it. from me to you, from right me. there. And he has to jump and kind of make a juggling catch, puts his foot in the ground, does a little shake, <laughs> and Britt goes that way. He goes right down the sideline for about 10 yards. Unbelievable. And I don't know, guys, if there's stats out there from next gen or whatever about how many people that he's made miss because it's always like yards after catch or yards after contact. But I'd like to know, like, how many people he's made miss mm. and made positive plays out of. And it's so hard to quantify because you could say, well, so many other guys were probably tackled right there. Uh, all I'll say is it's it's a luxury that the Atlanta Falcons are happy to have. I'll say this. Uh, when Arch mentioned a guy getting tight, and I instantly went back to when I was playing and say you got a guy who you know is a really good blitzer, and you know it's hard to block him. And he comes up, and you instantly think about, oh, snap, I got to make sure we slide to him. I got to make sure we get to him. It's kind of like when you watch that on film with Bijan, you say, okay, he just made three guys miss. Then you get in the ball game, and it's you, and you thinking about it now. Yeah. So it absolutely can mess with your mind a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah. okay, I've seen this guy do this. Now it's me and him, and oh, <laughs> now you're overthinking it. Yep. So you can absolutely say when you turn on the tape and you watch this guy, guys won't probably admit it, but he will strike fear in a lot of defensive players because oh, yeah. his ability made guys miss you in just, space. You just came up with a new. We got a new segment. We got to come up with this somehow. We got to create this. You, you've seen the stuff on ESPN where they, or I think NFL Network with Randy Moss. You got Moss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. How about you got mustard on your face? <laughs> <laughs> you got mustard on your shirt or something like that. Because this dude is just squeezing a hot dog all over somebody's chest. It's unbelievable. But you guys are right. The, guy, oh, the guy's fun to watch, man. Um, finally, let's just kind of wrap up this conversation from last week and talking a little bit about the defense. I mean, we mentioned throughout the course of the season, it's been a bend, not break defense. Uh, they held in there. Uh, they did give up some yards in this game. I think it goes back to the grittiness of Baker Mayfield. I mean, even though he did mm. not have Evans and Godwin, he still had some playmakers. He still had two really good backs in the backfield. And Kate Otten, give him credit. Like, the guy stepped up when he needed to step up, yeah. right? And, and we knew that that was likely going to happen. There's so much talk about National Tight Ends Day. Mm. And he ends up and ended up having 81 yards and two touchdowns in the game. But at least the defense ended up forcing the turnovers and didn't allow him on the final drive to be able to get in. I just think it, it's kind of been – the culmination of the season, if you will, DJ, this defense kind of more bend but not break. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and we talked about it last week on the podcast. Like, they're going to come in here. They're going to be ready to go. Just because they don't have their top two guys, they're still going to show up and play. These guys are in the National Football League for a reason. These guys will go out and compete. And their coaches watch film. So they're going to have some things dialed up for you. So give them some credit. Give Baker some credit for maybe spread the football around. And, you know, they were using their run game. I mean, I think – out of the first 20 plays of the ball game, their running backs were used probably 15 times yeah. out of it, whether it's yep. throwing or running. So give them a lot of credit for understanding some of their deficiencies and making it work for them. But on the other side of it, this was a team that absolutely wanted to play better. I know there was a lot of conversation coming off the Seattle game about playing better on the back end. We talked about Jesse's ability. We talked about how about A.J. coming off his guy to go make an interception, getting two now. Uh, in the last couple ball games and, and not being able to get them for a while. Uh, I thought they did an outstanding job in the run game, especially in the second half. I think they had 74 yards rushing in the first half, 28 only in the mm -hmm. second half. You did such a better job, uh, whether it's misfits or whether it's tackling in space. And that's the other part of it. I thought they did a really good job of not allowing a bunch of yak. Like, they were really tightly contested plays on the on, on the outside. And this is a defense that you mentioned is bend but not break, but they always find a way to come up with those plays. Think about 
Tampa's going down, looking like they're having a great drive, going down to score. They do the flea flicker. Jesse Bates is playing cover three. He's playing zone coverage on the other side. He shouldn't even be dropping the ball on the wheel route and understands what's going on around him, falls back, turns his head. Mike Hughes does a good job of playing in between both guys and finding the football and making an interception. Now you go back down and you go score. Now it's a two-touchdown ball game. Mm-hmm. Just a little small things like that, giving your offense opportunities to go score again, giving your team a chance late in the ball game, shutting the door on them, making the adjustments in the second half. Mm-hmm. So this this defense is fun to watch. Yeah, you want the sacks, all that kind of stuff. I know you didn't get as many QB hits you want, but in the ball game, when you look up, you got a W, and I think that's what matters the most. Yeah, a couple of nuances in the secondary, too. A.J. comes up with another interception, mm-hmm. and uh, the cool little wrinkle that he came with because they played a little two-invert, meaning you, you, most fans know what cover two is, two safeties in half the field, and then you're playing five under zone or five under man. Well, Atlanta, with a little switch up, rotated A.J., the corner, back to the half safety position, and they ran Richie Grant out in the flat as the flat, flat. curl flat defender. So it flips it around. And so as a quarterback, you think, okay, while that corner is way too far inside, Baker thought he had a wheel route down the sideline, and really essentially A.J.'s playing half safety. And A.J. made the adjustment, read the quarterback, broke on the ball, and makes a diving interception. But that's some of the things that Jerry Gray's doing with his secondary to kind of mix it up. Even though you don't have pass rush potentially some of the time, there's guys in the back end, veteran players, the safeties and the corners, that understand these different nuances that are going on and some of the things they're switching up to confuse potentially a look for a corner or for a quarterback. And the next thing you know, A.J., who's playing – corner, but actually he's playing half safety, gets an interception right there. Yeah, it's pretty impressive uh, with the takeaways. And, I mean, I thought Jesse Bates's interception was, was a true display of athleticism. Mm-hmm. I mean, just showing his ability to go up, elevate, not only get his hands on the football, steal it away from the offense. Uh, just think about uh, the guys that have been making a ton of plays for this team are highly paid guys that are actually backing it up, mm-hmm. uh, which is, is refreshing when you make the investment in certain players and they back it up with their play on the field. So let's turn the page because as we record this podcast here on Tuesday, uh, it's fun to sit here and celebrate a win, but guess what? It's time to turn the page and get ready for another one because Atlanta is going to welcome the Dallas Cowboys into town this weekend. And guys, some similarities between the last time Atlanta was at home it's not a divisional opponent, but it is a conference opponent, and it is a team that can throw the football extremely well. You look at the last three weeks, Seattle, Tampa, and Dallas, we're going to face three of the top yeah, passing teams mm. in the National Football League. So, Arch, if you could kind of break down this matchup and what's going to be key for Atlanta, what, what – Dallas brings to the table that might present some issues for Atlanta. Well, this will be a hungry football team coming in because they're starting to fall behind a little Mm -hmm. bit. Uh, Obviously, the loss to San Francisco on Sunday night is a loss that, uh, you know, puts them behind the eight ball a little bit. Talented quarterback. The quarterback last year finished number two in the MVP voting in Dak Prescott. And just to relate it to the current staff that's on this uh, for the Falcons, Remember, Raheem was the defensive coordinator in L.A. last year. Zach Robinson was the pass game coordinator in L.A. last year. These two teams played last year. Dallas uh, really got after the Rams. In fact, Micah Parsons, who potentially could play in this game, he's been injured, had two sacks in that game a year ago. And Dak Prescott threw for over 300 yards. CeeDee Lamb had 12 grabs for 160 yards and two touchdowns in that Mm. game a year ago. That's who's coming to the building, yep. and they're coming with a bit of a chip on their shoulder or a desperate feel desperate, that yeah. we've got to find a way to win win a game. So um, that's, to me, on the surface, what, what you're bringing to the table and a team that probably throws the L.A. tape on as well as the Falcon tape and said, hey, let's blend these two together and see we can operate against this operation. That's I would think they would be coming with that kind of confidence. Would you say that's our shot? Yeah, I totally agree. You're talking about a team that, like you mentioned, wants to throw the football around. Dak, we know is, is that their, their run game is kind of abysmal right now, not doing what's kind of – Last in the league and running the football, you know, Ezekiel's been up and down. Dowdle's been out. Uh, they brought in Cook. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he, he had a couple carries, but this is an offense that is led by Dak Prescott. And it's a reason uh, I'll look at he's averaging 37 attempts per game. That tells you he's going to throw the football around. He's been sacked 18 times this year, uh, but – Obviously, no Demarcus Lawrence, who's on IR, Neal on IR, Deron Bland on IR. So they got some guys on the defensive side who are out. But this still is like I think the word you use is desperate. And mm. you're talking about and, and Arch, Iraq. You talked about the NFC. Uh, I looked at 
around the NFC and why it matters so much about this game and trying to stay in it, like you mentioned with Dallas. You're talking about the entire NFC North, over 500. Three teams, 6-1, and one, Lions, Packers 6-2, and two, Vikings 5-2, and two, Bears 4-3. and three. We're talking about where Tired we are division. right in the middle. Everything's so tight. Uh, NFC West, every team 500 except the Rams, who are 3-4, and four, but just beat the Vikings, who we know are a top mm-hmm. of, uh, obviously, the NFC as well. So this game matters for both sides. Yeah, we got the division. It's, it's feeling real good. But when you talk about latter part of the season, when these tiebreakers matter, Cowboys looking at the same kind of thing. So they got to come in here and feel like we got to put forth our best effort because this is going to be one of those games you look back on and say, all right, this is one of those games we needed. So we talked a little bit about some of the personnel. I want to focus a little bit on Dallas's defense because it has not been great this year. I think partly due to – well, probably not partly. A lot having to do with guys being injured mm-hmm. and not having a guy like Micah Parsons out there, I mean, one of the best pass rushers in the league. 26th in the NFL in yards per game allowed, 373 a game, 31st in the NFL in points allowed at 28.3. We've seen – over the last couple, two out of the last three weeks, if you will, or three out of the last four weeks, maybe, Atlanta's been able to score the football. So let's talk about Atlanta's offense, Arch. How do they end up taking advantage of a little bit of a banged up Dallas defense or one that's kind of reeling a little bit, it's not been playing their best? Yeah, you got to make it a physical football game. You got to come off the ball and run the football. I think that Zach's done a really good job of kind of probing defenses. Against Tampa, it's kind of been the pass game early. And then all of a sudden, here comes the run game. Tyler Algier gets cranked up. That that happened in this game. Second quarter, all of a sudden, Algier starts to get rolling now. Bijan's mixed in with the run game. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he probes Mike Zimmer's defense here. Mm-hmm. I think this is a team, uh, that, as you mentioned, is banged up. I do think there's a good chance that Micah Parsons is going to play in this game. I don't think – I think it's one of those deals where he may not be completely 100%, but they not be able, may not be able to wait any longer. Right. You know, they right. might need to get him in the game. So that may be uh, a part of that. And he had some success against this scheme, as I mentioned, uh, when these two teams play Dallas and the Rams, a very similar, similar scheme we're running. I think it's got to be a physical football game run the football I don't think you have to reimagine anything though do you guys no. I mean I think Kirk's playing at a high level your wide receivers are blending with one another you're getting everybody involved I think you continue to do that I think that makes it difficult for teams to prepare for mm-hmm. we just talked about Bijan trying to prepare for him alone I mean think about okay now Bijan and Tyler in the back we're seeing more in that we're seeing more of those guys in the backfield some together. Um, are we are we taking care of the, uh, the bowling ball of razor blades? Or are we going to take the guy that's <laughs> going to jump, cut you, and make three or four guys miss, and you'll be on Sports Center? So um, I, I think that it, you just continue to do what you're doing, but you got to come in with the resolve that you're going to play. You, you can't have an effort like you had after three, two really good efforts, then the Seattle game, you throw three really good efforts, and then the Seattle game. Those kind of yeah, we can't come in. We just kind of roll our hat out there. Yeah, right, Dallas is right. banged up. You got to come in, and maybe this week. How, what do you guys do? This was a team in Tampa that was banged up. There's a lot of conversation about who they didn't have and all this kind of stuff. Close football game. How much does that help you a little bit, knowing that you still were in a fight to the finish? Yeah. Here comes Dallas in a very similar concept. Does that help? Yeah, I mean, guys, I would say that's kind of the life in the National Football League. Yeah. You mentioned it earlier, DJ. Like, they got pros, too. No doubt. Dallas has banged up some guys on our IR. They got pros, too. And sometimes you just have different guys. I saw it last week. Kate Otten stepped up. Rashad White yeah. stepped up. Bucky Irving stepped up. Baker Mayfield stepped up. That's going to happen with, with Dallas as well. And I felt the same kind of thing we were talking about going into Seattle, right? They had lost three straight games. They have to travel across the country. Oh, we got this one. No, no, no. They came out and executed better than Atlanta did. So let's transi- transition this into, before we wrap it up, I want to get you to give me one key, your biggest key to the game for the Falcons to get a victory. And I'm going to start real quick just so I can give you another second here. I think it goes back to turnover margin again. Yeah. You go back to the Seattle game, a little bit loose with the football. Go on the road to Tampa, awesome with ball security and offense, took it away on defense. And I think if you're a defense that's not going to be getting after the quarterback – well, you can compensate that by taking the football away. And you got a, co- a quarterback in Dak Prescott that has thrown his share of interceptions this year, eight picks. Yeah, so I think there's going to be some opportunity. Yeah. yeah, so there's yeah. going to be some opportunities. You talked about it. They're going to throw the football sure. around the yard, win the turnover margin again. DJ, what do you think? Before I give my key, I want to give one last thing to what Archer's talking about. And I think the one thing that makes the Falcons' offense really good is the versatility they can have. Talk about being able to use – all right, here comes a run game. You can start with the pass game. You've shown the ability better to do both. San Fran went in and ran the ball for 223 yards against him. Mm-hmm. You look up and you know the Falcons can run the football. 
But also, you can look at him and say, oh, Kirk threw for 509 yards against this game. He just threw for eight touchdowns against the Bucks. you know, in back-to-back games. They have the ability. Where does Dallas go? Where do you stop? Where do you – what's your – you got to pick your poison this mm-hmm. ball game. I think it, it bodes well for the Falcons because you can't do both. Uh, my key to this ball game, I think, is you got to get Dak off his spot. I think we've seen a lot of instances where he gets outside the pocket and he can get a little reckless with it when he gets outside the pocket because he wants to make those plays. Mm-hmm. I think you can force him off his spot. I think that would be a big, big part of this ball game and not allowing him to create more. But also, I think it helps you a little bit more once you get outside the pocket. Once he gets outside, that he may give you one. Arch, what do you think? I think the game. Well, and you, you, Rack, you, you talked about their injuries, and and I think it's the wide receiver core for the Falcons against the Cowboy banged up yeah. secondary, yeah. and maybe potentially a lack of pass rush. You know, maybe Parsons plays, maybe he doesn't. That changes the dynamic. Some if he does, you're going to have to dedicate some resources, much like you're talking about. Hey, we got to pay attention where. Bijan is, you got to pay attention where number 11 is mm-hmm. if he's on defense. But with that, all that being said, I think their secondary is banged up enough. I think there's some things that you're seeing. If you watch the 49er game, there was guys running wide open in that game for San mm-hmm. Francisco. So I think this receiver core that really seems to be coming into its own, guys making plays all over the field, that's the key to me. If those guys go make plays and some of those explosive plays, I think Dallas have a tough time. Offensive line needs another good game yep. uh, to allow all that to happen. And you're right. There's so many options on this offense. Just let uh, Kyle keep cooking, man. Yeah, let, get the ball in these guys' hands and let them cook. Full straight games over 65 right? going to the tight end. Art. Come on, let's go. <laughs> National tight end week. All right, Atlanta Falcons hosting the Dallas Cowboys this weekend at home. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 1 o'clock p.m. on Fox. Make sure you catch all the action. and We'll be back here next week to wrap everything up for you. Thanks so much for joining the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Enjoy, everybody. See you next time.